Good day students and welcome to math.serve.com. In this installment, we are going to be going over problems 81 to 85 of the ELM slash EPT release questions. And this um, set of problems focus mainly on geometry. Don't forget to vis visit our website at math.serve.com for access to a wide variety of tutorials ranging from algebra all the way to calculus. Okay, so let's take a look at um, problem 81. It says the cylinder shown above has an has a base area of 25 pi square centimeters and a height of 12 centimeters. What is its volume in cubic centimeters? Now, this is a circular prism, and there's a standard uh, formula for the volume of a prism. Do you remember what that formula is? Let's go ahead and take a look at that first, and then uh, we're going to apply it to this problem, okay? So the f area for the volume of a prism is uh, big B times H. Big B represents the area of the uh, base, area of base, and then H is the uh, perpendicular height of the solid, height of the solid. So in this circular prism, these two circles right here represent the base. So let's go ahead and label that. This top right here, that's the base B. And the nice thing is um, it's computed by confining pi r square. But we already know what it is. It says the cylinder shown above has a base area. So they've already told us what the area is. The base area is 25 pi. We don't have to compute that. Um, so we know what big B is. The only thing we need to find next is H. H is the height of the solid from here all the way to here. And we can clearly see that it's 12 centimeters. Okay, so our volume of the circular prism, which is big B, area of the base times height, is given by uh, pi r square times H. Pi r square, we already know is 25 pi. 25 pi is the area of the base, so 25 pi. And then we're going to multiply that by the perpendicular height, which is 12. Okay? And then when you multiply 25 pi by 12, you get 300 pi uh, cubic centimeters. So that goes the answer, option letter E. All right, let's take a look at problem 82. It says, if each edge of a cube is doubled in length, then the volume of the cube is multiplied by a factor of. Now, um, before we do this, let's go ahead and take a look at our formulas real quick. Uh, we're going to consider the formulas for scale factor. Okay, scale factoring is if you if you enlarge or um, diminish an image or an object by a certain factor. How do the dimensions change? By what factor does the side or perimeter change? And by what factor does the area change? And by what factor does the volume change? Okay, so those are the formulas we're going to take a look at. You want to have these formulas memorized um, in order to be able to do these problems real quickly, okay? So let's look at the skill factor formulas. So for um, a, a, a length, length, or perimeter, they have the same dimension. They're just a length, length of perimeter. For length of perimeter, you basically, to get a new dimension, you multiply it by the scale factor. You don't do anything with the scale factor. Just whatever the scale factor is, just multiply the old by the scale factor. For area, you're going to multiply the old area by the scale factor quantity squared. Remember the dimension for area is length squared, right? Length times length. So you have to multiply by the scale factor squared. For volume, we're going three dimension now. Can you think about what it's going to be? You multiply by the scale factor raised to the third power. All right? So don't forget length of perimeter, just straight up multiply by scale factor. Area, you multiply by the scale factor squared. Volume, you multiply by the scale factor cubed. All right, in this situation, it says if each edge is doubled. So what is being doubled here? An edge represents the length, okay? So if each edge is doubled, 
then the volume of the cube is multiplied by a factor. So for length, what did they do? For the length, we had the situation where, let me spell my length correctly. So for the length, we have a situation where um, the it was doubled, okay? So length was doubled. What on earth does double mean? If you double something, you're scaling it by a factor of two. So since you double a length, the scale factor is equal to two. Okay? Now, how about the volume? The volume, remember, is scale, you multiply the old volume by the scale factor raised to the third power. This is the factor that you increase the volume by. So what is the scale factor is two, right? So you're gonna multiply the old volume by two raised to the third power to find your new volume, okay? So what is two to the third power? That's eight, so you have to multiply the old air volume by eight in order to get the new volume if the length of each side of the cube is doubled. All right, so skill factor cube gave us eight, so our answer is option letter E. All right, let's take a look at um, problem number 83. It says, in the picture above, the perimeter of a, of a starfish is 30 centimeters. Um, this original picture is to be enlarged. So this is the original picture we have here. It's going to be enlarged to a much larger picture in both dimensions to an image that is similar to the original picture. So there, there is um, the whole idea of scaling again, all right? If the area of the enlarged image is nine times the area of the original picture, what is the perimeter in centimeters of the starfish in the enlarged image? So this is another problem on um, scale factor. So let's refresh our memory on the formulas. I know we just um, went over them on the previous problem. So let's look at it again, formulas for scale factor. Now remember, when you're dealing with a side length or perimeter, side length or perimeter, what do you do with the scale factor? To find a new perimeter or side length, like in this problem, we are looking for the new perimeter. What you do is you basically multiply by the scale factor. For um, area, to find a new area, what do you do? you will simply multiply the old area by the scale factor quantity square. You notice here it talks about the enlarged image being nine times the original picture. So it tells you that um, to get a new area, the old area was multiplied by nine, which is the scale factor square, okay? And then for volume, what do you do with volume? You multiply by scale factor cubed. In this problem, we're going to be making use of formulas one and two, the first and second formula. Now, since um, the um, area of the enlarged image is nine times the area of the original picture, that automatically tells me that we're using this piece right here, the scale factor squared is equal to nine. Okay, that's the fact, that is what you multiply the areas by to determine, to preserve the similarity relationship. If the scale factor of square is nine, then what is the scale factor? The scale factor has to be the square root of nine. So the scale factor of the sides or perimeter is going to be the square root of nine, which is three, okay? So since the original picture is 30 centimeters, uh, the perimeter of the original starfish. So the perimeter of the enlarged is going to be what? Perimeter of enlarged. Remember, perimeter and side length, you just simply multiply by the scale factor. You multiply the old. All right, so the old perimeter is 30. We're going to multiply by the scale factor, right? So question, is the scale factor 9 or is it 3? Nine is the scale factor square. That's what applies to the area. The scale factor is three, which is the square root of nine. So we're going to multiply the old perimeter by three. Remember, you just multiply by the scale factor 
when you're enlarging or shrinking the side length or the perimeter. They are in the same dimension, okay? So 30 times 3 is 270 uh, centimeters. That is the perimeter of your enlarged image. So option letter D is our answer. All right, let's take a look at problem 84. It says an automatic ice cream scoop serves spherical helpings of ice cream. The scoop can be adjusted to serve helpings of from one inch in diameter to two inches in diameter. So basically, you can alter the shape of that um, scoop, the volume of the scoop, by altering the diameter of your scoop. So it says if Tim orders a scoop with a two inch diameter, and if Paul uh, wants only half as much ice cream as Tim, what should be the diameter in inches of the scoop for Paul's helping? So um, what are we doing here? We, are, we want half as much. So if you think about much, what is that? What do you fill the scoop with? The scoop is filled with ice cream. And the amount of ice cream that you fill the scoop with can be also determined in mathematical terms or expressed as the volume of the ice cream. Okay, so when you're dealing with the amount of ice cream, you're looking at volume. So if you're looking at half as much, that automatically tells us, says half as much, that um, we're dealing with volume here. And remember from our formula for volume, what do you do with volume? For volume, volume, um, what do you multiply for volume again? For volume, you multiply the original by scale factor to the third power. Remember, three is the dimension of volume. So if the scale factor of the volume, scale factor to the third power, is one half, because you want half as much of the volume, okay? Now, what is the scale factor going to be? Because the scale factor can help us determine how we can adjust the length the side length or the diameter, actually just the diameter. Remember, diameter is just, a, is just a length, okay? So let's find out what the scale factor is. Then we're going to shrink Tim's diameter by that scale factor, okay? So what is the scale factor here? Scale factor cube is one half. That's the adjustment factor for the volume. But for a length, we'll take the inverse of the third power, which is the cube root. So you take the cube root of both sides. So what do we have here? We have the scale factor. So this is by how much the side length will be um, uh, reduced by to get um, one half as much, okay? So remember, this is a factor. This is not the diameter. So now it's, you might be tempted to select that answer, but that's wrong. That's not what you asked for. The problem said, what should the diameter be, okay? Since so the diameter, the old, uh, old diameter is two inches and you want to shrink it, you have to multiply by the scale factor to get a new diameter, okay? So um, let's see, Paul, Paul's um, diameter, let me call it Paul's diameter, is simply going to be um, Tim's diameter times what? Times the scale factor. You just multiply Tim's diameter by the scale factor. Why are we not squaring a cube in? Because diameter is a length. Okay? If we're talking about area, then we we'll square this. If we're talking about volume, then cubit. Well, we already know what the cubic relationship is. That's one half. All right? So Paul's diameter is going to be Tim's diameter, which is two, multiplied by the scale factor. The scale factor was a cube root of one half. And this expression will tell you what the diameter of um, Paul's help um, scoop should be in order for him to get half as much um, ice cream as as um, as Tim. Okay, so we can clearly see that our answer is option letter D. All right, let's take a look at problem eighty five. It says the figure above consists of semicircle AED and square ABCD. If the length of a side of the square is twelve feet. How many square feet are enclosed by a semicircle? So we have to be really careful how we read this question because this question is asking us for 
the area enclosed by the semicircle. You see the semicircle here? What is the area there? All right. This is a square, so every side has equal measure, so congruent. Um, this side is 12, this side is 12, this side is 12. The side length of the square coincides with the diameter of the semicircle. So if I split it, let's say this is the center, this is going to be 6, and this is going to be 6, right? Because we know that the midpoint is the bisector of the diameter, right? So we have 6, 6, together they form 12, which is congruent to all the other three sides. So the question is, what is the uh, area of the semicircle right here? All right, so let me just extract it, take out the semicircle, because that's all we care about. The radius of the semicircle is 6. So what's the formula for the area of a semicircle? The area of a semicircle is basically one half of the area of a circle, right? One half of the area of a circle. And we know what the area of a circle is. It's pi r squared. You can consult your reference uh, formula sheets um, if you don't remember, okay? So one half times pi r squared is the area of a circle divided by two which gives you the area of a semicircle, all right? So in this problem, we know that r is equal to one, I'm sorry, what is r again? r is equal to six. So if r is six, um, then we can easily compute the area of the semicircle because that's the only variable that we need. So the area of the semicircle is uh, one half multiplied by pi multiplied by 6 squared. All right, 6 squared is 36. If you divide 36 by 2, you have 18. All right, 18 pi um, feet square is the area of this semicircle right here. So um, the final answer is option letter C. So just one point I just want to highlight before I wrap this up is you might wonder um, how do you know that you're looking for the area and not perimeter. The two words you look at is square feet. Remember, feet square is the dimension of area, as we talked about earlier, and also enclosed. So we're looking for the amount of square feet enclosed. So anytime you see square, think about area. If you see cube, Think about volume. So feet square, cube is volume. And then feet square is area. And in this problem, you can't really deal with volume since the two dimensional shape is either perimeter or, or um, area. And since they, they're talking about square feet, you should just know automatically that you're dealing with um, an area situation here. So thanks so much for taking the time to watch this uh, presentation. Uh, feel free to subscribe to our channel for updates to other cool tutorials such as this. And do post a comment in the comment section to let us know what you think about this clip. We really appreciate it. And you can give us a thumbs up if you like this video. More clips can be found on math.serve.com. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.